everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This video, I don't know if it's going to really speak to all of my audience out there, but if it doesn't, um, that's okay. I think there will be a group of people who this may be very helpful for. Um, in case you didn't know, I actually worked in TV news for about six years, and it actually overlapped with my YouTube channel. My early days of YouTube, I was both doing morning news and I was doing YouTube. In my six years, I actually started out doing kind of a hodgepodge of things. I was an associate producer behind the scenes. I very quickly started doing reporting and producing and weekend anchoring, and then the bulk of my time was spent, um, four years of my time at the station was spent doing morning news. And I really loved it. I loved everybody I've worked with. It was actually, um, despite the insane hours, it was a great shift and a great group of people. And I was always doing my makeup myself. Um, that kind of works for me because I love makeup. But the realization we should all have is that not all of the TV journalists you see are also like side gig makeup gurus. Like many people may not care that much about makeup and are just simply learning it out of necessity, basically. So yeah, in most TV markets, it is the reporter or the anchor's job to figure it out for themselves. And in a lot of cases, people in these jobs aren't making tons of money, especially starting out. So I've been asked, could you recreate what your makeup would be like if you were in news now? And I've had plenty of thoughts about this over time. You know, I still watch the news. I see people. I think about, you know, why they decided to do this or that. Like, I'm not hating on but I just like, I watch the news through a slightly different lens than other people, I guess. And I thought what could maybe make this video most helpful is if I stuck to all drugstore stuff and made it sort of a beginner look that could work for anyone. The interesting and unprecedented thing happening now with this virus situation is that actually even network anchors may be doing their own makeup in a lot of cases. And, um, you know, you've seen different ones broadcasting from home. So um, it's a different world for everyone right now. But for people entering this industry for the first time who need a little guidance. I hope this helps you. I've tried to really think this through for some makeup recommendations that'll be easy to apply, um, long wearing, and ultimately look great on camera. Will this be a particularly exciting makeup look? Um, probably not, because I think the overall goal with the look is to look finished, to look your best, but to not distract from your message. It's not really about you, the anchor or the reporter. It's about what story you're telling. So with all that backstory being said, Let's dive in and get started. I'm going to kick things off with a primer. I've actually already moisturized and sunscreened, and um, I'm gonna put on this Hard Candy Smoothing Primer Balm. I would say this is kind of an optional step, um, but if you've got some issues with pores, um, if you feel like you have particularly large pores around your nose area, sides of the nose, that tends to be a problem for some folks. Um, this can really be helpful, actually. It's really creamy. It's the closest thing I've found to the Tatcha Silk canvas primer. Um, it's just super easy to blend in. I've got the e.l.f. putty primer as well and that's nice but it has more of a drag across the skin. It just feels a little more dry. Here I can just really easily blend this over large surface area sections of my face and it goes on super easily. It can also be helpful around fine lines too. So I pop that on and then I was thinking about how sometimes people in news are doing their makeup at home and then maybe they've got a full day of reporting and then they start anchoring. The time that they appear on camera might be at the tail end of their day and maybe they're trying to make makeup last all day. So this all has to be long wearing. But in many cases I remember being at the station and people would have little to nothing on their face all day and then maybe some anchors and reporters would throw it on quickly in like the 20 minutes before they went on air. So I thought a stick foundation might actually be the best option here because if you're on location in a live truck or a car and you're trying to throw something on quickly before your live shot or if you're just at the station you're trying to get it going, um, if you're in non-ideal lighting and you're just at your desk, you know, this can be swiped on so quickly. The texture is great. The coverage is really nice, but not completely unnatural looking. And um, it's just very easy to blend. It's the Infallible Longwear Shaping Stick from L'Oreal. It's my favorite um, stick foundation from the drugstore. I wear it in shell beige, and it just doesn't get much more user-friendly than that. You're not having to fumble with liquids and just fuss around with 
more high maintenance products. I think a stick is just so simple to throw on. And this is a great middle of the road stick, I think for a lot of different skin types too, because some can be very rich and dewy because it's a cream, you know, it's a cream texture product. But this one I think is kind of in between. It gives me a really nice natural looking finish on the skin that's not too dry looking. I would say it's overall more on the matte side, but it's not too dry and unnatural looking. Also, I think a nice large brush is really great, especially if you're not used to doing makeup or doing a ton of blending. A big brush can take you over a lot of surface area all at once and really demystify the whole blending, the whole act of doing that. So this is from Real Techniques. It's called the RT Go Brush. It has a bonus little concealer brush hidden inside if you need to get to some smaller areas, but it can really make Make fast work of blending out this already easy to blend stick foundation. Now for concealer, I think you want to go with some of the best coverage you can get here, um, especially my morning anchors out there. You need something that's going to make you look wide awake and rested and um, give you plenty of coverage while not looking thick and dry. Side note, when I was in the news, um, the station was just transitioning to HD and we did find that that changed some things about the look you could have. You wouldn't want to have this thick caked on look in HD because it could pick up everything. And I remembered a lot of tweaking going on with lighting and some of the lighting wasn't super friendly to my face. I didn't feel like all the time. Never hurts to take matters into your own hands and make sure you are well concealed on the under eye. And this e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer is great because it only takes a little bit. It's very effective and it doesn't dry me out. I use light peach and we're going to use just small dots right in here. Think about your darkest areas and hit those. Um, I can also tend to be a little dark out here with a little bit of melasma that peeks through, especially this time of year. So I'll go over that. Redness around the side of the nose can be an issue for me. Also, this shade is gonna be just a little lighter than my skin tone. So if I can brighten right down the center of my face, that's gonna be flattering. So I'll also hit the chin and I'll hit um, these sort of nasolabial folds as they call them. Then you can go and you can use that very same brush and just press, kind of press and dab it in. The more swiping you do across the skin, the more you're just gonna move product around and not necessarily enhance the product's coverage. So think of pressing and patting in. Um, consider that technique also when you're blending out that foundation stick, you know? You can use a little bit of a circular buff if you want to, but when it comes to areas where you need the most coverage, think about pressing and patting it in. So here I'm gonna hit that inner corner. The product can kind of move around a little bit. Um, there's also a non-hydrating version of Camo Concealer, just the original one with the black cap. That is great as well. Um, it just obviously doesn't offer as much moisture. I notice a profound difference between the two and I really like the hydrating because I can use that extra moisture. I've got some fine lines coming in on the under eye area and to me that just looks so fresh. And I really like this brush because that angle makes it so nice to get in there into the under eye area and you're really handling all your coverage steps with one brush. So now we are looking super smooth, um, really even. You've got your foundation stick all over, you've got your concealer tackling your most needed coverage areas. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of powder to set this because on new sets, you're hit with some really bright lighting. It can tend to pick up on any shine that might be on your skin and you need to combat that a little bit. Loving Rimmel Stay Matte. I love this just in my everyday life, um, but this would be a great option for news folks as well. This is the shade called Sandstorm and I use it with my e.l.f. small tapered brush. Reason why I like this powder so much is because look, I dab in there and you're not seeing a big cloud of powder now around me. It's not picking up an excessive amount. Um, my brush is just picking up a minimal amount of powder. I'm gonna get the mattified effect, but I'm not gonna look too cakey. And I'm not gonna lose all of the natural sheen that my skin has, but I'm gonna take away any shine that's a bit too much. For my skin, I'm normal to dry, so I 
basically just hit my T-zone, and I also lightly go over my under eye. There is not much powder on this brush. You can barely see that there's powder on the brush, but going over that concealer that just has a little bit of dewiness to it, this locks in the staying power better, and it just makes the area look overall a bit more flawless. If you want to continue and go on over the rest of your face, use a larger brush, whatever you can, but I really don't think you need to worry about being too powdered up. Just hit those key places where shine can be obvious, you know? Because we're not fully done with powders yet because we're gonna do some bronzer and some blush. This, my friends, this little $15 palette is one of the best buys. It's a lot all in one. Instead of having a zillion different compacts floating around in your bag, get the Catrice California in a box from Ulta. What you've got here are two blush options. One is kind of rosy. It's a great dupe, actually, for the Milani Mai Tai blush that I loved back in the day, probably used a ton on the news. That kind of color. You've got some shimmer in this one, so if you want to layer the two, this kind of warms that color up, makes it a bit more peachy. And you got two tones down here of bronzer slash contour, and I think they're really good tones. Nothing too orangey. This you might use to just all over perk up your skin, and then maybe use this in the deeper areas you want to contour. You also have a highlight, which I would use very sparingly, because keep in mind, we don't want too much shine popping off the skin. So what I'm first going to do is go into the deeper of the two shades. These are nicely pigmented colors. Um, you won't find that you need too, too much of them. Just a gentle tap in, and I'm using my e.l.f. complexion brush right now. e.l.f. brushes, they're great, man. I didn't just pick these for the video. I use these every freaking day. So we just go around the hairline with that. And bronzer was really my friend um, when I worked in TV news because I did feel like the lighting would wash me out quite a bit and I could totally benefit from having a little more color on my skin. Applied it there around the hairline. We're gonna dab into that again and do a little contour here. Um, I would say the number one thing I notice sometimes with uh, TV people who are doing their own makeup, you know, sometimes the contour is way overboard and it doesn't take much really to get a good effect. You've just got to be committed to blending it out, but not blending it all over this area. Keep your blending focused in this zone right here where you can kind of feel that hollow under your cheekbone. We don't need to blend up higher than that because then that kind of defeats the purpose and we don't need to take it lower because again, that takes away from that illusion we're trying to create of having a cheekbone. <laughs> so again, I'm just using that one shade and focusing it in there in that zone. And then we really don't want to ignore the neck and chest. Now let's just like go into both. Let's really pick some product up and make sure everything is nice and continuous and consistent. We don't want to look like our face has been doing one thing and our neck and chest are doing another. So just really be aware of any exposed skin that you have. Same goes for arms too. You see a lot of uh, anchors and reporters in like tank top dresses and stuff like that. Um, think about your shoulders. Think about everything looking the same overall tone. Then I'm just diving into the lighter of the two shades and I'm just putting this right where I would put a classic bronzer. So where sun is hitting, tops of the cheeks, right across the top of the forehead. This is just warming up my skin. See, not too much, but it makes a difference. Then I'm going to take my blush brush from guess who? Elf. Yes, affordable brushes. We're going to go into this shade right here, our matte blush, kind of rosy, beautiful color. You'll notice I was not like psh, going like that in the product because you don't need to. It's plenty pigmented with one little dab in. And folks, blush is a can't miss step, I think, in this process. I mean, I love doing blush just every day. It's really the moment when the face comes alive in the makeup routine. So here we are, we're looking pretty matte right now because we've done our foundation, concealer, powder, bronzer, blush. We may be ready for just a little, little bit of subtle glow. This highlight in here, very workable. I get a little bit on my highlighter brush. This is my Moda Highlight and Glow brush. I will link to everything down below in the description, but I'm going lightly, very gently on top of that cheekbone area and down to the cheek. 
A little glow is fine, but we're not out to distract. Let's just keep the skin looking fresh, looking natural, but not over the top. Now, if you wanna set this, a few different setting sprays I could recommend. Urban Decay All Nighter is the most hardcore. If you're trying to like get through a day with great staying power, um, that's a really nice one to invest in. Maybe you've got dry skin and you do struggle with looking too dry uh, once your makeup's on. This Neutrogena Radiant Setting Spray is really great, but kind of a nice middle ground that I think is a little bit closer to the effect you're gonna get from Urban Decay. This doesn't make me look overly dewy, but it kind of tames down those powdered areas is the e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. It actually has a really nice sprayer on it, so we're gonna put on a few mists of that. Think forehead, chin, cheek, cheek. It really takes your whole look, makes it look like skin. Now, what about brows? There are tons of options, but keep in mind, I'm trying to make this a beginner friendly look. And I think for beginners, a powder and wax combo is probably the easiest way to go. This is going to be least likely to take you over the top, but you can still get a really effective fill in. I love um, the little duo from e.l.f. e.l.f. has a nice little brow kit like this. The one I happen to have on hand right now is from Revlon and it's in the dark brown shade. I mean, when I started in news, I was just using an old L'Oreal matte brown single eyeshadow and filling in my brows. Not saying I'm proud of that, but what really gets the job done is if you've got a wax. So if this comes with a little double-ended brush, take the wax through first. That's going to give that powder something to cling to, okay? Um, if you just go straight powder, Think about how long that's gonna last without anything to cling to, probably not that well. So just run it on through. Then I'm gonna flip over to the other side of my angled brush, dab into that matte brown powder, and you know, I've got a fairly full brow to begin with, but there are still places that I can even out somewhat. I'm not looking for a solid, super dark chunk up on my face. We want it to look natural, we don't want it to distract from our message. Just think of symmetry, think of evening things out. I could go into a whole video on its own, sort of just grooming your brows. I mean, I tweeze stray hairs every single morning. That's the first thing I do makeup wise. But as far as this goes, I'm just trying to make them look the most similar from left to right. Not too heavy and also think of the most product coming in, the thickest application of product it tends to be around the center of the brow for me and then um, it gets a little lighter as I go inward. There's also a nice little spoolie that you can use to help pull things through. Now if you think you really like using pencils that's fine. There are a lot of nice really skinny pencils that give you a very natural hair like looking stroke through the brows. If you're into pomades a great one from the drugstore is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio. So lots of options but if you want to finish off your brow with something that really holds them well this Almay Brow Styler is it. I love this. I have it in medium brown, skinny, skinny brush, and just lightly take it through. There is some color. This is a tinted type of gel, but it has amazing hold. And it can also kind of even things out a little bit color-wise. Um, for some people, this might be all they want to do with their brows. If you've got a pretty naturally full brow already, this could work. Next thing we're going to do is eyes, and I would not skip an eye primer, my friends. Um, really, if you're going to take the time to put on eyeshadow, put on an eye primer because it's going to help everything last and it's going to intensify everything you do. So this is from Milani. Um, you'll have it a long time because it only takes a little bit. Small dab in between two fingers. You're going to cover your whole eyelid. You're going to go up through the crease. Just cover all surface area where eyeshadow might go. And this is also a nice time. What I just noticed with my crease there was that I had a little concealer collecting in the crease. So dabbing over everything, making sure there's not any excess foundation or concealer stuck in those creases. Now is a great time to just smooth over that. And this primer is not too sticky. You know, it's not like a glitter glue or something, but it does leave a little bit of tackiness. In my opinion, it's just enough tackiness to um, help that shadow cling and really intensify even cheap, inexpensive eyeshadows. And then the palette I would steer you toward, this is super affordable and like one of the 
best neutral palettes. I would say it's the best drugstore neutral palette right now. It's Maybelline Nudes of New York. If you got their Nudes palette years back, remember they had that little black palette called Nudes? This is a mega step up from that. Not only in splashing in a bunch of different tones here from cool to warm to a little bit plummy, also the textures here completely rival high end. And um, yeah, you do have some shimmers. What should you do in terms of shimmer on the Nudes? Well, I would say don't go too hard with it. I'm not saying you can't use shimmer. I'm not saying you can't pull in color. I mean, it's the least fun thing ever to think about rules really with makeup, but more often than not, I think you're gonna be wanting to go for that look that makes you look finished, lifted, awake, and just not super over the top. Now, my theory here with this eye look is going to be primarily lift. And keep this in mind, when you're on the news, you are not always in this nice, like head and shoulders close-up shot like I am in right now. In many cases, stations might position you where you're standing further away from the camera. You're standing beside a big screen. For all my weather people out there, you're always pretty much at a distance at your green screen. Therefore, the looks you do, you're sitting here right in front of your mirror and you're thinking, okay, well, that's enough. And then you go back and you watch yourself on camera and you're like, wait, I can't even hardly see what I've done to my eyes. So trying to give yourself a little extra lift with your eye look in the way I'm gonna show you here in this tutorial, it's gonna look look nice up close, but it's going to have an impact even when you're further away from the camera. Because I always felt like in my early days, whenever I was further away from the camera, I thought things just aren't standing out. Well, you kind of need to do a little bit more. So first thing, picture a line going here from the corner of my eye up to the end of my brow. And keep that line in mind because you don't want your shadow dropping down below that line. We want to keep things up lifted, awake. So what we're first gonna do is take a flat brush and one of three deeper shades in this palette. We've got a deep brown, a deep plum, this burgundy. Um, let's just go with the brown today. This is called Self Starter. I'm gonna dab into that, tap off any excess, and we're just gonna start patting this on the outer part of our eyelid. Nowhere but there right now, okay? Got that? Get a little bit more flip your brush over. So we were patting this way, now we're going up this way. We're wedging that into our crease and we're lifting it up and we're not going down in this area, we're just keeping it up above that imaginary line going from the corner of our eye to the end of our brow. This lifted look basically gives the illusion of what we look for from our false eyelashes, right? Um, they give us lift, they give us kind of a glamorous edge. This isn't really about high glamour right now, but this is about a lift that can even be noted from a distance. Same thing over here on this eye. Does it look blended? No, it's going to get blended in a second. This is just the application of product. So I patted it on outer part of the lid, dip back in, wedge it in the crease, pulling upward, we're not trying to cover the entire crease left to right right now. We're just focusing on the outer corner. Lifting up, my friends with hooded eyes, this is gonna be a great way to sort of manufacture um, that crease and that lift going up using what space you have. I know not everybody has the same amount of space between the eye and the brow, but here's what it should look like at this stage of the game. Then we're gonna take a crease type blending brush. This is my E60 from Sigma, the flat brush we used. This is my E25. Um, and what we're going to do, there's no product on this E25 brush right now, but that's going to blend in the crease inward, and then I find myself doing like some little circular motions over what's out here, diffusing that color a little bit, okay? We've applied quite a bit of color there actually, and now we're making it travel inward, covering that whole crease, and blending out that edge. This is gonna be a key area where you wanna focus on don't drop it down too far when you blend, but you're like, the color, I put it right there. It's not gonna drop down. It can. This is where things can get muddy, is as you blend and you get out of control with your blending. Just blend over that area where you put it. You applied it precisely where it needed to be. Now just focus on the edges and softening them out. Now we're looking like this. This is one shadow. It's almost looking as though it might be two shadows because we've applied it 
concentrated, but now it also looks sheer in some areas. What I would do next is take a fluffier type brush and go to this color called Soloist right here. This is a matte shade and this can highlight up under our brow. And it can also function to smooth out your blending too. There we are, nice and smooth. Now I'm going to take that flat brush we were using. It had dark brown on it kind of wiping it off on my hand to clean it off, or you can use a towel or whatever you want. I'm gonna go back into Soloist, our matte shade, and I'm gonna dab this over the inner part of my eyelid. I'm gonna slightly overlap a little bit of that brown. The idea here is that we brighten things up. Our eyes do not look like a couple of total black holes. You've slightly overlapped with your darker shade, but you're looking nice and bright right there. Guys, we are almost done. We're gonna take that self-starter shade again, tap off excess. This is a pencil brush, so a small brush. Now with the lower lash line, this is where I think I see a lot of mistakes made and they were made by yours truly as well back in the day. Um, going really hard with eyeliner, encircling the eye, and it looks way, way heavy. Um, and you're thinking, well, I'm at a distance from the camera, so don't I need to do something like that in order to make my eyes stand out? No, we need to keep it soft. Do it with shadow like we're doing right here. And you'll notice I'm not going fully in. I'm not enclosing my eye. I'm just kind of doing this on the outer half, just like that. And that's going to be enough to actually help your eye stand out. Just enough, but not too much. Now, if you wanted to do some other fun steps here, you could take like this color or this color or this one or this one and apply a little bit of that to your brush and do kind of a transition shade if you want, kind of coming up over your darkest color. Let's just show you, for example, this kind of rosy beige called Explore. You can kind of hit up over your darkest shade if you want a little more fade. But I'm kind of trying to show you the bare minimum you could get away with if you were doing that in a hurry. Now, my morning news anchors. A light pencil in the lower inner rim will change your life. I know you're waking up looking tired and probably a little bit pinky or red there on your waterline. Um, this pencil from Anastasia I think was actually really worth it. I used to use a product from Wet n Wild called Ultimate Brow Highlight and it was just a matte kind of peachy pencil and I would use that in my lower inner rim. It lasted really well. That's getting harder to come by but I got this double-ended pencil and it's a lot of fun. So use the matte end and put that right here in the lower inner rim. And I notice it just brightens and widens the eye. If you're looking red in that area it's so so helpful. Then there's a neat shimmery side that you can use and kind of go right around your innermost corner here for brightness. It's not like out of control shimmery, but it's very nicely brightening. You can also pull that up underneath your eyebrow. Sometimes I just go through, I know I'm gonna do this every day, so I just do it before I even start the eye makeup. You could also highlight right above your cupid's bow, do a little U shape right here with that shimmer. Love that little pencil. Eyeliner, whatever you use has got to last. There are many different formats. You might like a pencil. You might like a pen style like this Revolution Renaissance Flick. Somebody tweeted me recently and said they thought this was getting discontinued, which is unfortunate because it's so user-friendly. Great, easy to hold. That nice little fine-tipped pen is very easy to maneuver. Also great staying power. We can't have smudging. So Milani Stay Put Matte 17-hour eyeliner is another amazing option. Um, there's a great black shade. That would be my top pick. What I have right now is the dark brown because I ran out of my black, but um, just put this right along the lash line, okay? Shake it up first, and then we're keeping a nice thin line right here. I'm not going to do any wild wingage. Again, not trying to do anything overly distracting. This little inkwell design, like I said, might not be my first choice for beginners, but I'm going to have to research some more pens that I know will not smudge. Um, this survived childbirth for me, so I mean, it's kind of a can't miss pick. Once that is dry, which it doesn't take too long to dry, we're going to curl the lashes. Don't hold it down like this. Actually lift it up and do sort of a pulsing 
thing here with it. Um, this Tweezerman Pro Curl Lash Curler, I've been using it for years, came from Sephora, but a great investment. Not like it's overly expensive, but you know, it was a good thing to get and um, it really fits my eye shape well. And I do this for about, you know, 30-ish seconds, holding it there, pulsing it. And then I have been really into lash primers lately, but I understand that not everybody wants to take that kind of time. So let's just find a decent mascara here from the drugstore. CoverGirl Exhibitionist is a nice one. Um, also, if you're looking for one step, really quick, nice impact from a mascara, IT Cosmetics Superhero is amazing. I love it for the fact that it builds up so quickly on my lashes, gives me great length and thickness, but it also does not flake off. If you're on camera, you know, who's wanting dark flakes occasionally coming down on their cheek? You know, no one. I'm going to keep this pretty much just to my upper lashes. So again, the impact mainly on the eye is above the eye, lifting the eye. And you'll find that that shadow shape that we did, really intensifying our outer corner and lifting up, that from a distance kind of gives you the effect of wearing false lashes. Now, I would occasionally do some false lashes on air. There are a lot of great natural styles you can get, um, even just like the outer corner type of thing. And if you find yourself wanting to do it quite frequently, you might notice less irritation and just a little more ease on your eyes to do the magnetic magnetic style. And I will link to my video and the product below. The KISS magnetic lashes are so the best because they work off of a magnetic liner. Yes, you just put on the liquid liner and you kind of, I do a little extra on the inner and outer corner. I was just wearing these yesterday. They stay on all day for me and they just magnetize on and the styles are really nice. Lashes can really be a great way to lift and open the eye. Um, the thing is, they just take a lot more practice. Um, you know, don't expect to grab false lashes one fine day and, you know, that's the day you wear them on air. I would spend, like, actually a couple weeks in training, honestly. Like, you've got to get the hang of it, you know? That's why I really wanted to present today an eye look that I thought could be executed whether you want to wear false lashes or not and it'll still look good. For lips, I really think you want to do something. You don't want to just be totally bare and you don't want to do blank them out nude because having some color there can give a lot of life to your skin. Maybe you want to go for like kind of a toasty neutral shade. Maybe you want to go more pinky or reddish. I've got a couple of options here from Rimmel. This is called Provocalypse and it's a long wearing lip color that has this top coat that's very, very comfortable on the lips. It actually ends up feeling like lip balm once you've got it on. A shade that looks super natural on my lips is this one called, what's it called? This is called Wish Upon a Berry. Okay, I was wearing it in a recent video. I'll pop up a screenshot of what that color looks like. Today we're going to do something a little bit deeper. It's got a little more red in it. I still think it's totally appropriate and gives me a really finished look. It's kind of an earthy red. Um, this is called Heartbreaker. So you've got your one side that's going to go on feeling like a liquid lipstick and it's going to dry down entirely before you put on the other step. The matte liquid lipsticks that are out there can be really great, but the problem is, is if you're trying to wear them all day and then at day's end get on camera with them, they can look kind of dry, kind of patchy, a little worn, you know. This stuff stays looking really fresh. I would just say one or two times throughout your day, you want to apply that little top coat. I've gotten away with just putting it on like one time and my product was still nicely on my lips. But what you're gonna see is nice about the top coat is that it doesn't make you look like over the top glass shine, but it just gives you the gentle sheen of say a cream lipstick, um, but it makes it feel so comfortable. A good time to put this on might be right before you do your mascara so this can be drying and then once you're done with mascara you'll probably be ready to swipe on that top color. Also in terms of lower lash mascara, um, you know, I don't always even do this but I have this from Thrive. It's liquid lash extensions and what I like about this on lower lashes is that it's a tubing mascara. That means that when it comes off, it comes off almost in like little balls, you know, like it removes from your eye in almost this rubbery way. It's kind of odd but it's incapable of smudging and so that's why why it's so great down on the lower lashes. So I'll just throw that out there if you want something for that, but you can get away without it, I think. So now to the other side, it's gonna be applied with a doe foot. Just swipe it on. Feels like lip balm, honestly. Like it doesn't have that heavy or tight feel that a lot of liquid lipsticks can have. 
nice bit of shine. Now for my hair, should I give some attempt at a done hairdo? Take my little clips out. And there we go. There is my present day um, news anchor look. The key here really is practicing your own look. Taking what I've done as just sort of some suggestions, kind of a foundation for your look, and then tweaking it and really making it your own, adjusting it for what works for you and the particular products that work best for your skin. But um, hopefully this gives you a start. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.